Vinny, could you please help me with my luggage? Sure, sir. Not that one, Binny. Oh. Drag the trolley bag. This one is too big and heavy for you. I'm a big girl, sir. <laughs> Thanks, Binny. Well, in this luggage dragging business, I forgot to welcome you all to Science for Juniors. Hi, I'm scientist Radhi Krishnan, SRK, and this is my assistant Bini. Professor, why is it that wheels make things easier to drag? You have asked a very profound question, young lady. Let me try and answer it scientifically for you. Let's enter the virtual world. In this module, you will learn about friction its uses and problems. Can you predict how your palms would feel when you rub them together? Bet you feel heat being generated. Rubbing makes your palms warm. Have you ever thought why? Rubbing of hands produces heat because of a force called friction. Friction is an opposing force that occurs when two surfaces rub against each other. Consider another example. Push a book kept on the table. You will notice that the book slides some distance and stops moving. Similarly, a football rolls when you kick it and stops moving after a while. Why does this happen? In both the cases, there is a force between the objects that comes in contact. This force between the book and the table and between the ball and the ground stops them from moving for a long time. Such a force that always acts against the force of action is called friction or frictional force. So now you know that it was difficult to drag the regular suitcase because of higher friction in comparison to the suitcase with wheels. But why is it always easier to move things with wheels? I'm coming to that, Binny. Well, see, friction acts on wheels too. But wheels reduce the surface area of an object in contact with the surface. Wait, open my trolley bag, Binny, and pull out a pair of shoes and roller skates. Now look at this. Wow, sir, you know how to skate. Of course, Binny. Now getting to the point, isn't skating much easier and faster than walking? Sure it is and it's much cooler too. I also see that it is much faster and easier to move on wheels than by sliding. Of course it is. Now my body weight, mass etc. doesn't change whether I wear a shoe or skates. But the friction acting on my skate wheels is much lesser than on my shoe. Did you get it? Yes, uh, let me also try skating. Oh, ouch! Well, Binny, skating is not all that cool either. You need to do a delicate balancing act to be able to skate well. Let's now jump into virtual world for more knowledge on friction. Let's now take a look at some of the important properties of friction. First, friction is a contact force and occurs only if the objects are touching each other. Second, friction opposes the direction of motion. That is, it slows down and stops the motion of a moving object. Third, friction produces heat by converting a part of the energy available in the form of kinetic or potential energy to heat energy. Sure you have heard of the Stone Age people who used to start fire by vigorously rubbing stones. It is often overlooked that friction is important for our daily life. Take a look at this. The boy is able to walk 
because of the friction between his feet and ground. It provides a grip on the ground that is necessary to avoid slipping or falling. Ever wondered why sneakers always have treads on the bottom? The treads on the side of the sneakers create friction that gives some extra grip when you run and play. Similarly, it is the friction between the wheel and the brakes that helps in controlling the speed of a bicycle and even in stopping it. Here is another example, friction helping in achieving the desired motion. Take the case of a parachute. As air rubs against the inside of a parachute, the force of friction causes it to fall slowly. The greater the air friction, the slower the parachute moves. Check out these examples from our daily lives. The nails that we use to hang different things are held in the wall due to friction between the nail and the wall. Friction is also needed to pick up objects and hold them. In the same way, while climbing a rock, friction between the hands and the rock stops a person from slipping. Hmm, it was because of friction that fire was invented. Right. In fact, even today, matchsticks are lit because of friction. You notice that the surface on which the match lit is rough. But uh, will that mean that matchstick can be lit by rubbing it against any rough surface? Of course not, Binny the Mini. Don't be silly. Matchstick can be lit only when rubbed against the rough surface of the matchbox. Because friction between the two materials raises the temperature enough for the reaction to take place and hence lit the matchstick. Got it, sir! Binny, there is science behind all the day-to-day -day things we encounter. Just that we haven't discovered many things yet. In fact, I have many more day-to-day -day examples where friction acts. Just that you wouldn't have thought that friction acts on them too. Take a look. Excess friction makes it difficult to move objects and slows down moving objects. For instance, friction slows down the motion of a bicycle. Even moving a car on an irregular road would be difficult when there is excess friction. What about machines? Do they involve friction? You may be surprised to learn that any object or device that has moving parts can wear out easily due to friction. Many of the machines that we use in daily life would not operate smoothly if they are not protected from the heat and the wear and tear caused by friction. Yes, now another thing. Bring it on, sir. Well, you know grease and oil reduce friction. Try oiling your cycle chain and see how smoothly it works. It will help increase the life of your cycle. Oh. Oh. Well, let's try this out. Hold the steel glass. Is it easy to hold? Of course it is. Now, try holding this. <gasps> oh. It's just a game. Relax. But did you see that oiled surfaces slip easily? Sir, I got your point. Now I realize that the same thing happens in machines too. Now I get it. Great! Then one last surprise now. But sir, you said this was the last one. Well, that was just to keep you going. Tell me, Binny, have you ever written with a regular pen on a card? Yes, sir. But pens usually don't write well on card paper, especially on the birthday cards pasted on the gifts. Good realization, Binny. Now, why is that? Uh, don't know, sir. But my guess is friction has something to do with this. Well, the guess was a good one. As in this case, both the surfaces are smooth. 
Now have you wondered as to why it is easier to write on a blackboard with chalk? Now I know sir. It's because both the surfaces are rough and the friction is high. Excellent Binny. You do make me feel so proud of you sometimes you see. Well, now that the surprises are over, let's revise what we learned today. The three important properties of friction are friction is a contact force and occurs only if the objects are touching each other. Friction opposes the direction of motion. Friction produces heat. Friction is useful in providing a grip and preventing from slipping and sliding. Binny, let's go. Binny, what are you thinking, Binny? Sir, um, I'm wondering, sir, my brother moves so slowly. Is it because he's much bigger and bulkier? He experiences a lot of friction while on the move. Hence, can't move fast. <laughs> Come on, Binny. Don't be mean. I hope you liked today's episode. For more such fun and learning, do tune into Science for Juniors again. Have a great day and study your world to discover science every day. <laughs>